how that music. Alright, so, this was probably one of my favorite games uh, when it came out, which was, I think, 94, 95 ish, something like that, so I was 14, 15 years old. Um, this is one of those games where, if you've never played the Quest for Glory series, <laughs> this is by far the best installment. Um, in terms of just progression, I mean, the first one was, uh, so you want to be a hero, which was great, and they had, uh, the second one, I think it was, I always forget the name of the second one, the third one was Wages for War, which just finished earlier today, I actually meant to just briefly the other day that I had picked up the Quest for Boy 5-pack on GOG for like 10 bucks, as part of like the retro game series that I'm doing, and, uh, I mistakenly just kind of blew through without recording anything. I was just like, that's a me thing. I played that game when I was probably 12, 13 years old. So that was a, a nice step back in time to kind of go back to my childhood and kind of remember those old games. Um, for now, though, I'm going to be jumping into four. And the music wigs out whenever I tab out and do stuff. Anyway, so, um, traditionally when I was younger, I did play these through with all the different uh, class types. Um, my favorite was always the rogue or the thief. On QFG3, Wages of War, which I just finished up 20 minutes ago, um, I played a wizard all the way through. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do that this time around as well. Play a wizard for this one. So, without further ado, let's jump in and create a wizard. Create a character. Time to start. You awaken from nightmares of flying and falling. You find yourself in this strange place, the only illumination, an eerie green glow. You've lost your weapons and the contents of your backpack somewhere during the journey. All you have are the clothes and armor on your back. This leaves you with four burning questions. Where are you? How did you get here? Who brought you here? And how in blazes can you get out of here? No, make that five burning questions. What city did your luggage end up in this time? <laughs> I forgot that this had voiceovers. So, John Reese davies who at the time... I can't remember if this was before or after. It had to have been before Wing Commander came out, but I always remembered him from the Indiana Jones movies. So his character was always ingrained in my head from back then, and it wasn't until much later that he would go on to do Lord of the Rings and become a fan favorite with, uh, with that movie. Anyway, let's adjust some settings here. Always turn the speed up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and 
and save. You are in a large cave, dimly lit by glowing lichen on the walls. Strange, irregular outcroppings of stone grow from the ground, looking like the skeleton of some enormous beast. Here and there, petrified human bodies seem to grow half in, half out of the floor and walls. Creepy. Alright, so what magic spells do I have at my disposal? Open. Detect magic. Let's do that one for now. There is a faint glow of magic on all of the bowls, stronger near the altar. The torch sconces beside the altar have some magic, and the altar itself radiates a strong magical aura. So the torch the sconces... torch on the right side of the altar also radiates a magical aura. Okay, good to know. You are in a large... Yeah, I already did that part. So... Dazzle, that's a zap, calm, fire, fetch, force bolt, levitate. I remember all these because I was just playing through. So probably we want to light the torch. That is a notification that I'd get a quest update. Okay. The deteriorated corpse has grown part way into the cave. Brief search reveals a piece of hard gray rock, which you take, and some coins. Three crowns and 13 kopecks. Okay. You find more coins. You find that didn't, that didn't. Search the desiccated body. The only still usable item is a dagger which you pick up. However, lying around the bones are some coins. Five golden coins. Each have a crown stamped on them. And thirteen small copper coins, each stamped one kopeck. Okay. Oh, I must need the dagger for something, so let's go ahead and save again. For those of you who have never played these games, save frequently! Quick saves, <coughs> excuse me, quick saves were not very common back in you the day. That didn't, that, so I don't, that doesn't look like there's any more corpses I can click on. That did So let's go grab this torch. You take the torch. You light the torch in the sconce. Now let's put that one back and see what happens when they're both put the lit. You take the torch. It looks pretty much as... What is that, though? It looks... There's nothing in the torch. Yeah, it almost looks like there's a sconce, though. The altar feels strangely warm to your touch. There's nothing in You put the Okay. No one seems It doesn't say This torch is Okay, I can't do anything with that one. They're both lit now. There is a faint glow of magic on all of the bowls, stronger near the altar. The torch sconce the torch on the right side of the altar. Alright. This is not a good place to practice throwing. <laughs> this is not a Alright, well let's just take that torch you for take now. doesn't appear that I could do anything else. And I can sense magic, but I don't think I can do anything here right now. You force the sphincter open with your dagger and pass through. That just sounds wrong. You've made it into a large chamber. Stone valves, like the one you just passed through, apparently block three other passageways. 
There is a huge stone altar in the center of the room and an exit to the south. Okay, so that's the altar. The rough stone altar is covered with dark stains as of blood long since dried to powder. You feel a creepy, uneasy sensation whenever you pass near it. Someone has placed a large sheet, like a sort of makeshift shroud, over the withered corpse. It also has a small money pouch. Well, I'll be taking both of those. Thank you very much. You pick up the canvas sheet and take three crowns and 17 kopecks from the pouch. He won't be needing them anytime soon. More for me. The entire cave is suffused with dark, eldritch magic. The focus seems to be the altar near the center of the chamber. After some rest, you feel better. The chaotic forces in these caves twist. That was trigger, yeah? Yeah, it didn't do anything. Your spells. Alright. So there's an exit to the south. Try as you might, the stone valve will not open. Perhaps this isn't the right time. Okay, let's go try the other one. Try as you might. Oh, same thing. A flock of winged creatures emerges from... Try as you might. A stone... Uh-oh. I'm about to get attacked by bats, it looks like. Ah! I'm not sure... how to do combat here. Well, that was to run. Okay, that's what I need to do. You have to hold it. Suck at combat. In a bitter battle, you were better than the badders. You kick some butt, too. Fair enough. However, I that took me a minute to figure out how to do the combat. The batter wasn't carrying any A lot it different doesn't. quest for Glory 3. No rest for the... After some rest, you feel worse than... Heavy rope bridge span. It would be nice work if you could get it, but you don't know a flying spell. The best you can do is to levitate, but that just takes you up and down, unless you can find a way to let the wind help you. Well, thankfully I looted a canvas earlier. As you hold up the sheet like a sail, you can feel the wind pushing it and you towards the pit. Unfortunately, you're not... And that's why we have a levitate spell. Oh, tentacled beast. You just barely made it across the pit. That is a 
doesn't seem to go anywhere, but it looks like an exit right over there. You can see a glint of light. Oh, and a person. You slip through the mouth of the cave, just in time to avoid being crushed by its closing jaws. Alive! Only one person has ever walked away from there before. Who are you? How did you get here? Oh, there are so many questions I want to ask you, but I have to get home quickly. It is so dangerous out at night in Mordavia. The town is due north of here. Be careful, there are many bad things wandering around. Good luck! Oh, by the way, my name is Katrina. I hope we meet again sometime. <laughs> Farewell. Blows my mind how epic this game seemed when I was like 14 years old. I think it was like the first game I ever played that had voice, like fully voiced. This symbol looks fully like voiced. a six-armed starfish or perhaps like the tentacles of an octopus. You sense a feeling of strange, chaotic power from it. A six-pointed symbol seems to pulse with energy and comes loose in your hand when you touch it. You have the feeling that you may need this sign, so you carefully store it in your pack. This symbol looks like a mouth with pursed lips. This symbol is a stylized representation of a crossed pair of bones. Alright, so I don't think I can do anything with Symbols? Apparently not. Better save. This would not... Not be a good place to sleep. Well, at least I can rest for the 60 After minutes. some rest? So I must be poisoned or something, because my health keeps going down. So those bats must have eaten me. You sense moderately powerful but latent magic waiting near the top of the squid stone. The bonsai bush also possesses magic, but it is of a gentler, more subtle nature. Hmm. The path is dripping with slimy... Woo. The Dark One sign does look a little like the top of the standing stone. So you try touching the sign to the stone. You feel a resonance between them. Nothing else happens. Nothing. Okay. A standing stone. The bush seems to be stuck. It looks as though it is caught in the rocks. That loosened up the rock pile somewhat. You blast the rock pile with a force bow. Puzzle solving for the win. Fetch that bush. Your magical lasso encircles the bonsai bush and gently draws it out of the grimy goo. Carefully clean the plant and put it away. This tall standing stone has been... Alright, I don't appear to be able to do anything with... That ...any of this stuff at the moment. The path is incredibly slippery. Yeah, it's, I won't be able to get back up it, so... After some... Poison seems to be gone. Alright, let's 
let's leave here. Alright, she said the town was due north. It's probably the first place I want to go. The grasping hands of the floating balls of light, such a surprise, are magical. The rest is just no Small hummocks of earth and grass. The bleak yeah. the decayed remains of a I didn't see any balls of light. All right, well, I'm assuming this is north. You are in the southwestern corner of the forest. Dank mists rise from a dismal swamp to the south and west. The path to the dark cave lies to the southeast. You are in the... Okay. So, I'm assuming this is north. Waterfall. Babbling brook. Cat Always good to pick some flowers, You maybe? pick a few of the flowers. Okay. Gray rocks litter the ground. Take a drink of water, The stream maybe? water is cold. You sense no man. Okay. Let's go north again. You sense no magic in this area. Okie dokie. Gray rocks. It doesn't. Bunny rabbit? What the frack? No! Evil bunny. <laughs> the music is pretty awesome. That's pretty funny. There is absolutely nothing in the little rabbit's fanny pack. Well, maybe a pocket watch, but you don't need one of those. <laughs> ah. Skill and practice, my friends. Skill and practice. Oh, it's been so long, I can't remember how to kill things with magic because... The stream... It appears to go over them instead of uh, attacking Pine them. trees grow in profusion in this cool climate. All right. I don't think I can go north from here. Nope. Oh, you know what? I should save. I forgot to save. Did give me an automatic save, though. <laughs> There's the town. Hang on, what are those? Wildflowers bloom with the autumn weather. Can I pick any? You pick a few of the flowers. Good. Never know when you need things. <coughs> the town gates made of massive oak logs are currently wide open. There is a heavy oaken bar to secure them at night. Well, she did tell me, that girl told me, it's dangerous at night, so... One of the tall trees of the forest frames the town gate like a natural archway. The villagers have erected a scarecrow to keep birds away from the newly harvested corn. You've never been very good at making pumpkin pie. Fair enough. How about corn? Yep. Oops, I clicked through him too quickly. You can't take the scarecrow 
That would be strawberry. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Yeah, for 1994? But that is John Reese davies so, you know, professional actor, professional voice actor, you know. But yeah, for 94, I was saying earlier, I think before you joined, um, I was 14 when this game came out, so for the, <laughs> it was mind-blowing to have, like, this guy I remembered from Indiana Jones, you know, doing voices for games. It was like, Oh yeah, this is like the beginning of like, I think, I think right after this was when they started doing like the the live action puzzle games, live action point and click. So you would like the Wing Commander games, which had Mark Hamill, John Rhys Davies, Malcolm McDowell, Sierra did a few as well, like Gabriel Knight two, Phantasmagoria, and then like there was an Asian actress from Wayne's World, I can never remember her name. She did like a the Daedalus encounter. Maybe it was another 90s game that was like all voiced and stuff. To the north, you can see the buildings of the town. It looks a little like Spielberg, yet also very different in some undefinable way. To the north, you yeah, I already saw that. So the huge boulder raises a solitary wooden staff high above the clearing. The curved staff has a very organic look to it. Its curves seem somehow feminine. You can feel a sense of magical power radiating all around it. I know that's the magical staff. I, I, I remember getting it later, I think. You sense magic radiating from the staff and protecting... The staff feels warm and almost alive in your head. You hear an eerie voice in your head. This I must first do. The sacrifice of life for one of love. You find yourself letting go of the staff very quickly. Alright. Clue number one, we'll have to make a sacrifice at some point. What is this crazy old man doing? The old man walks with a slumped back and a sad, dejected look in his eyes. He seems to be searching for something that he hasn't been able to find. Oh, I forgot this game. So they did um, dialogue choices. I do not remember that. I, I, I am Nikolai. Have you seen my honor? Anna, have you seen my Anna? I am looking for Anna. Have you seen Anna? The sign reads, Dr. Cranium. You wonder what sort of medicine he practices. This doorway leads to a private residence. Let's go back to the other side and see if the inn is over there, because I'm going to want to room. You! How did you get here? Why are you here? Few strangers come to Mordavia. I am the Burgomeister. It is my job to know everyone and everything that goes on here. The Burgermeister stares at you suspiciously. You tell the Burgermeister about how you came here. Do you expect me to believe such a story? That you could walk out of that cave alive? That the cave would be open? Tell me no more lies. My name is Dmitry Ivanov. I am the burgomaster of this town. 
Mordavia is a well is surrounded by mountains. There used to be a road which led from here, but heavy rains have created a swamp at the base of the mountain south of here. No wagons can get you in or out, nor can any person, except perhaps you. I, that's the swamp I saw on my way in then. This is the town of Mordavia. There is an inn and a shop down the street where you can spend the night or get some supplies and be on your way. I want to go to the, the sooner inn you leave, the better for all. There are many dangers in Mordavia, and we certainly do not need a stranger to stir up new troubles. Just leave Mordavia quickly. No good comes from outsiders, and we do not want you here. Grumpy pants. Just leave. Yeah, yeah. Dangers. There are many strange and dangerous creatures that live in Mordavia. Trust nothing. The gates of this town are closed at sunset. So don't get trapped. Do out not at let night. yourself get caught outside after yeah. dark. For few can survive a Mordavian night or remain sane enough to speak of it. Fair enough. Uh, the shop does not carry much. We have been cut off from supplies for a while now. Still, you may at least restock your food rations before you continue with your travels. The Hotel Mordavia has rooms and food. It is safe place to spend the night. From the sign reading Burgermeister's office, you cleverly deduce that the Burgermeister works here. It's been years since you studied Mordavian, but you think that Burgermeister might be the word for mayor, or perhaps sheriff. The sign reads General Store. You wonder how much of a commission the salespeople get. The sign simply reads In. I guess that means you should go in. Ah, so punny. It makes me laugh. This general store is cheery and well lit, thanks to the warm hearth. The first things that you notice are the cats. They seem to be everywhere. Cat lady. You see the shopkeeper sitting on her rocking chair as she knits. She's a very, well, uh, sturdy looking woman. <laughs> So, you're the stranger in town. <laughs> I've heard all about you already. How is that possible? I just arrived. <laughs> you can call me Olga. Mrs. Stovich is uh, too formal, after all. We don't welcome strangers here. They bring nothing but trouble. All the same, it's good to see a new face again. Um, let me see, what could you use? Well, besides my regular items like brooms and pens, I uh, really don't have anything else for adventurers like yourself. I do have some lovely sandwiches you can use for rations. And garlic, of course you'll need garlic. I've also got some oil you can use to keep the weapons and armor from rusting. And if you like sweets, I've got some yummy homemade candy. Though the garlic flavored ones have all been purchased by now. <laughs> I'll have to uh, make some more. Uh, oh, and the shopping bag to carry things in. I have a couple of those left. Three twists of candy will cost you just five kopecks. <laughs> the kids love him. Yeah, so... I don't know if you've ever played any of these games, but each one has a... A basic theme. Um, it's like the last one, which I was just playing, which is Quest for Glory 3, has a, has like a, so it's, it's a switch, it's a switch between like Egypt, Egypt and um, the jungle, like Africa and Egypt. So you've got a little bit of those themes. This is definitely like the Romanian Transylvanian theme. So they all have that Eastern European accent and that garlic theme foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now garlic is a must-have item. It's just 25 kopecks for a bulb, and it will add flavor to any food. 
storekeeper looks around nervously for a moment, then continues. You know, some say garlic also has medicinal and protective properties. Hint, hint. <laughs> My husband always said I make the most interesting sandwiches. Uh, they're very good for you, and I only charge 50 kopecks each for them. The shopping bag costs 50 kopecks. It is very useful for carrying your purchases or uh, other large things. A flask of household oil will cost you 100 kopecks. It's good for door streaks and can also be used to loosen up rusty wagon wheels. I can sell you a very nice large pie pan for 250 kopecks. <laughs> <laughs> I've always admired the men who can cook. You can purchase the hand broom for 350 kopecks. I'm sure you'll really clean up with it. What would you like to know about? Yeah, Bella's a good woman. She's the one who really runs the inn. Her husband just gives orders. Someday she'll give Yuri a piece of her mind, and good for her! <laughs> the things she puts up with. Bella, she was a pretty woman not long ago. Was not called Bella for nothing. Losing her only child really aged her. What a tragedy. The castle north of town was abandoned for many years. Then, some strangers moved in four years ago. No one knows what goes on there now. But it won't be for the good, I'll tell you. Werewolves are gypsies, no question about it. They change into wolves at night, eating anyone they can get. <laughs> Nothing can kill a werewolf but silver or magic. So you be careful out in the woods at night, you hear me? The gypsy camp is not at all that far from here. Okay. That is a bad place, and you'd better have nothing to do with it. It is dangerous, and should have been thrown down long ago. Many a stranger never came back after asking questions about it, so don't let your curiosity be the death of you. Yeah, my husband and myself have run this shop for many, many years. My husband uh, passed on now, but I keep it just the way he liked it. A well-run shop is a busy shop, he always used to say. Not very busy anymore, what with the swamp. But I try to keep it going the best I can. Mostly housewares, but a few items that uh, might interest you. All right, so I probably should buy some trail rations because I don't have any food on me. idea. I'll buy one of everything. I think I bought one of everything. Shopping bag. <laughs> the puns are horrible. Bagging big game with it is not recommended. Alright. So I've got garlic. I didn't buy the broom. I should buy the broom as well. So in the previous game, you could negotiate and bargain and get better prices, but it doesn't look like you could do it in this one. So can I put things in that bag? attempt to have a meaningful dialogue with the cat. It says, Meow. <laughs> Careful, 
The cats may explode if you touch them. They're perfectly content where they are. That didn't do anything. Ah, the cheesy puns. All right, time to save. Before I do anything stupid and kill myself, because you can die in lots of funny ways in this game. It's too dangerous to use magic in town during the day. The townspeople are very suspicious of magic users. All right. It doesn't budge. Okie dokie. That one? The cozy cat conveys a calmness most common in comfortable confines. Careful. Yeah. Oh, that's alive. Alright, so I don't think I can do anything else in here at the moment. Goodbye. Or, as my dear departed Boris used to say, may the wind blow fair at your back. Thank you. Time to check out the inn. You've entered a small but nicely furnished country inn. Stairs lead up to the guest bedrooms. The floor is covered with sawdust and peanut shell. A barrel contains the few shells that manage to land. The innkeeper stares at you with an expression of fear and astonishment. It is several seconds before he speaks. This is the Hotel Mordavia. Rooms here are 15 kopecks for room and board. Pay for one week in advance. Your room will be the first room at the top of the stairs. Uh, we want food in the morning or evening. Just sit down over there by the door. Pay the innkeeper for your room and board. Thank you for your payment. You say you are a hero. Well, we will judge you here by your actions rather than your words. Magic is a very dangerous thing. We do not trust those who use or are used by magic. Make certain you do not give us any more cause for alarm. The Hotel Mordavia has been in my family for generations. It is the only place to be when darkness falls at night. Everything else is closed, and even we lock the doors. You must knock if you wish to come in. So they really are going heavy on that. Night is a very dangerous theme. My name is Yuri Markarov. My wife's name is Bella. We are the owners of this inn. Make certain you are back in town before dusk. The gates of the town will close solidly. Keep out any dangers. I do remember if you play a thief, you can just climb over the walls at night. But I don't... I know I played this as a wizard many, many years ago. But uh, I, don't, I don't remember too well how to do stuff as a wizard. Which is why I did... Quest for Glory 3 is a wizard, and I'm, gonna do, I'm doing this one as a wizard as well. There are many ill things that roam this valley by night. Make certain that you never have to meet them. Never venture into the forest by night. The monastery is to the north of here. Okay, so it's north. It has been abandoned for many, many years, but it has a bad reputation. No one in town will go near it. And if you have any sense, neither will you. There is not much for sale at the shop next door, but you may find something you need there. The Burgomeister is the mayor of the town. You will be wise to listen to what he says and stay out of trouble. Fair enough. My name is Yuri Mark. All right, I think that's enough. Three of the townsmen huddled together. 
They keep looking in your direction as they talk. You suspect that they are saying something not particularly complimentary about you. Well, let's go say hi. I am Hans. Pleasure's all yours. I'm a farmer of pumpkins and corn and a person of great importance here in lovely Mordavia. Listen, I'm telling you, Igor's death must be avenged. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I'm Ivan, an elephant herder. Unfortunately, there are no more elephants in Mordavia, so business has kind of fallen off a tad. So the dialogue's a little bad because that second second one was not correct because he talked about avenging Igor instead of introducing himself. The town of Mordavi is a quiet place. Filled with friendly, joyful, stinky people. Well, I'm not so sure about the friendly part. We tend to be very suspicious of strangers like you. Yeah, well, anyway, the town is filled with joyful and stinky people. Yeah, happy, joyful, and stinky people. Well, I wouldn't call us particularly joyful. As a matter of fact, most of us are pretty glum. Oh, very well, all right, then Mordavia is filled with people, you know, stinky ones. Yeah, many stinky people. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it many. There actually aren't very many of us around here. Oh, forget it. Well, at least he stinks. Rumors. You talking to me? What rumors? Oh, there are no rumors here. Unless you count the rumor that the castle is owned by... Horse Patootie. There are no rumors in Mordavia to speak of. Guys, is it just me or is Mordavia a wonderful place? Oh, are you kidding? It's the greatest. There's many places to go, things to see. Are you kidding? Right. Let's not forget that scenic cemetery to the east of town. So the monastery is north, cemetery is east. Everyone here is nothing but grins. Real friendly. Yeah, except we don't know you. We don't like strangers. Or anyone else that's weird doesn't belong. They outnumber you. They out... Oh, I was gonna say. Nothing like warming your... It doesn't burn. Alright, well where can I sit down to eat? Because he mentioned sitting down to eat. No, don't sit there. You'll never know when an elephant will... You better not. Or maybe it's this chair right here. There we go. Food! It's a typical country breakfast. Fried beets and sausage with garlic for a garnish. Lots of garlic, which is fine. I do love garlic. Which is ironic, but when I lived in Bulgaria, <laughs> they eat a lot of garlic and a lot of onions. And like getting on the metro at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of August, anywhere in Eastern Europe, Serbia, Bulgaria, Romania. That is a test of epic proportions. It's the tray that the in you pick at your plate and serve. Okay. This should be my room. You unlock the door to your room and go in. All right, typical room. I have a chest to store goodies in. The furnishing. I shouldn't see this one doesn't deal with weight either. Um, Quest for Glory Three, you had a weight restriction. This one doesn't. Look at all the garlic. Garlic braids festoon the room, adding that certain special ambiance of Gilroy in the spring. To... All right, I think it's daytime, so I don't think I can sleep yet. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, I can only After rest. Some rest. After some rest. All right. My neighbor's dog.
dog is barking incessantly. It's not even actually her dog. She uh, she did a rescue. There was a dog wandering the streets that somebody abandoned, and she rescued it like a week ago. And yeah, she's been putting her in the patio down below. And when she gets anxious in the evenings, because she hears mommy coming home, she starts barking until mommy comes out and takes her for a walk. All right. So that was the inn, that was the shopkeeper, save my game, go back over here to the doctor's office. I do remember that puzzle. That's surprising. Just copy it. Alright. I feel like I just won a prize. Oh, really? That's a good thing that you can't hear it. Um, I can kind of hear it with the headphones. Um, but uh, this microphone, apparently, this does a pretty good job of noise cancellation. Then. You also can't hear the fan, which is surprising. Because if I'm using the snowball mic, that thing picks up... I mean, somebody can yawn in the other room and it'll pick it up. Alright. What am I supposed to do here, I wonder? The bust's eyes seem to follow you as you walk through the hallway. This strange device is labeled Transcendental Receiving Animal Processor. Hmm. I wonder if that stands for something. Be careful, it might be a trap. Might be a trap! It reminds you of a porthole minus the glass cover. So it's definitely not a glass of port. <laughs> the sign says this is the key maze. It's a truly impressive, original, multimedia work created out of whitewash and sawdust. There's a sign on the door. It says, warning, do not open without appropriate precautions. The sign on the door says, Dr. Cranium's private laboratory. Entrance by prior appointment or demonstration of superior intelligence only. Okay, so... This is a test. It doesn't. Let's start by identifying your animal. Welcome to the transcendental receiving animal process. You can only you can analyze the creature you wish to capture, then apply the proper bait. <laughs> Live, yes. Is it fast? Yes. Is it vicious? No. Is it silly? Sure. You're trying to catch a flying aardvark, which do exist in this game. Teach some termites to fly. You straighten out. It doesn't. Fast, no. Just move faster than it does. So I think the only answer it has is in regards to the flying art bark, in which case I need to. That didn't. You faintly hear a voice saying, Don't knock! Come on in! from beyond the door. You hear mysterious bubbling and sizzling noise. Alright. It's too dangerous. Uh, puzzle. So I'm assuming. Okay, so that's how you move those around.
does it look right? Oh, I think this is a keyhole, isn't it? I vaguely remember this now. sure about this part unless we're supposed to match that would be interesting Looks like I've got almost all of it except for these pieces right here matching. I'm also running out of time too because I gotta go here in a bit. Play anthem. I suppose there's a clue thing up here. Oh, it's because it's supposed to be in the middle. Herp derp. <laughs> All right, so we just move everything over one. Ah, over one, I said. Okay.
purple key goes up over here. Like so, yeah? What am I missing? Oh, this side's still jumbled. There we go. You've uncovered a keyhole, but you don't have the proper key to open this door. All right. Well, at least I got that part done. Now I gotta find a key. Unfortunately, it is time for me to run because it is 7.30 and I gotta prep for my anthem group with my brother. So I'm out. Enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. See you, man. I'll have this up for everybody else on YouTube here in a day or two. And tomorrow, I don't know what I'll stream tomorrow. I might do some more of this or I might keep on with Nice Old Republic because I'm playing both of these simultaneously for a little bit in the afternoons. So, adios.